Hi, this is Charles E. Childs. In these six sessions, we've got a lot of work to do. This course is going to give you practice in speaking English like the North Americans, in using the most important of 12 English language vowels, in stressing or not stressing the syllables of English words, in linking words together as the native speakers do, in changing the pitch of English sentences. It's going to give you important information about why and how vowels are pronounced for a longer time and when some are pronounced for a shorter time. It's going to introduce you to some sounds that even the North Americans don't know that they have, important sounds that you need to understand and when you're ready that you can use to be better understood. We aren't going to spend very much time on the separate sounds of English because the separate sounds are usually not the problem in communication. The sounds in combination are usually the problem. Please practice these lessons as often as you can and replay them even when you've progressed to a different session. When you hear them again, you may notice new aspects because of the information you've gained. As much as possible, put the accompanying booklet down and practice without it at least the first three times you listen to each session. After the third time, when you look at the booklet, you'll be surprised at what you heard. Now, let's begin. Session 1. In this first session, we're going to start to learn the vowels. We'll start with four easy ones. And we'll listen for the number of syllables in some words and phrases and decide which syllable is the most stressed. We'll discriminate between two kinds of consonants, stops and continuants, and I'll show you an extra sound that North American English speakers often use with stops, a very important extra sound. Then we'll examine the stops more closely to see how voicing affects the whole word. First, the vowels. We're going to start with three vowels that are well known in most languages. Then we're going to add a fourth vowel that's not so well known, but which is very important in North American English, the sound of uh. In most dialects of North American English, there are about 15 basic vowel sounds. They are e, i, a, e, a, 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 o, u, U, A, Er, I, Au, and Oi. We make the vowel sounds by changing the shape and size of the mouth. Please say A, A. Please say E, E. One of these two vowels is called a low vowel sound. Can you tell which one it is? Ah, e. It's ah. When you say ah, you drop your jaw and the tongue is low in the mouth. E is called a high vowel sound. When you say e, you raise the tongue. Now say e. Say U. One of these vowels is called a high front vowel sound because the tongue is high in the front of the mouth. And the other one is called a high back vowel sound because the tongue is high in the back of the mouth. E. U. Which is the high back vowel sound? U is the high back vowel sound. E is a high front vowel sound. In our system, we're going to give each vowel a number so that we can refer to it by that number. That way we won't be so likely to confuse sounds. Here are the first four vowel sounds that we're going to practice. Remember, we're talking about vowel sounds, not vowel letters. One, six, ten, and eleven. Listen to vowel sound one. E. 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 Listen to vowel sound six. Ah. 
ah, ah. Listen to vowel sound ten. Oo, oo, oo. Now I'll say a vowel sound, and you say what number it is. E. One. E. One. Ah. Six. E. One. Oo. Ten. Ah. Six. Oo. Ten. E. One. Oo. Ten. Oo. Ten. Ah. Six. E. One. Ah. Six. Oo. Ten. Oo. Ten. Ah. Six. Oo. Ten. Ah. Six. Oo. Ten. E. One. Ah. Six. Now I'll say a word, and you tell me what vowel number the word has. Team. One. Trod. Six. True. Ten. June. Ten. Jeans. One. Fool. Ten. Meet. One. Mark. Six. Bob. Six. Job. Six. Rude. Ten. Street. One. Stop. Six. Feel. One. Hot. Six. Good. Now let's add a vowel sound that may not occur in your language, but which is very important in North American English. The sound isn't beautiful, but you can't speak the language without it. The sound is, uh, like a punch in the stomach, uh. In our system, we'll call this very important sound number eleven. The sound is not front and not back, not high and not low. It's a very neutral sound, a relaxed middle central vowel sound, uh. Now listen as I read a list of words down and across. The list is in session one of your booklet. One. Sheet. Beat. Read. Keep. Ten. Shoot. Boot. Rude. Coop. Six. Shot. Bot. Rod, cop. Eleven, shut, but, rud, cup. And across, sheet, shoot, shot, shut. Beat, boot, bot, but. Read, rude. Rod, rud. Keep, coop, cop, cup.
cup. Now, I'll say a vowel sound, e, a, u, or a, and you say what vowel number it is. Remember, e is one, a is six, u is ten, and a is eleven. A, six, e, one. U, ten. Ah, six. E, one. Uh, eleven. E, one. U, ten. Ah. Uh, Eleven. Ah. Uh, eleven. E. One. Ah. Uh, six. Ah. Uh, eleven. Ah. Uh, six. U. Ten. E one Ah six Ah six Uh eleven U ten Ah six Uh eleven did you have any trouble? People often confuse six, ah, uh, and eleven, uh. They're both relaxed central vowels, but the jaw is lower in one than in the other. Ah, uh, six, is lower than uh, eleven. Now I'll say a word, and you tell me what vowel number it has. Remember, e is one, ah uh, is six, U is ten, and a uh is eleven. Team, one. June, ten. Pond, six. Steed, one. Pun, eleven. Sun. Eleven. Creep. One. Drool. Ten. Drum. Eleven. Dream. One. Treat. One. Truck. Eleven. Trod, six. Truth, ten. Seen, one. Fool, ten. Feel, one. East, one. Come. Eleven. Do. Ten. In the English language, all vowels are voiced. We say them all with voice. They are all vocal. We'll pick up vowels in the sessions that follow. Now let's listen for and talk about syllables. A syllable in English is a vowel or a group of vowels with the consonants or groups of consonants that cluster around it. Often English syllables end with consonant sounds. For example, here are some one-syllable words. Right, cost, try, play, strike. 
Here are some two-syllable English words. Flashlight. Ashtray. Exist. Weekend. Again. The following are three-syllable words. Important. Visible. Occasion. Holiday. Origin. Here are some four-syllable words. Necessary. Occasional. Temporary. Elementary. And some five-syllable words. Individual. Unnecessary. Imaginative. Periodical. Electricity. Now I'll say a word and you decide how many syllables it has. Extravagant. Extravagant. It has four syllables. Clock. Clock. One syllable. Reach. Reach. One syllable. Record. Record. Two syllables. Record. Record. Two syllables. Ordinary. Ordinary. Four syllables. Industry. Industry. Three. Industrial. Industrial. Four. Apartment. Apartment. Three. Accident. Accident. Three. Accidental. Accidental. Four. Eventual. Eventual. Four. Fly. Fly. One. Flight. Flight. One. Carrier. Carrier. Three. Career. Career. Two. Airline. Airline. Two. You probably noticed that record and record, though they both have two syllables, sound very different. That's because they are stressed in different ways. The first word, the noun record, has the stress on the first syllable. The second syllable is not stressed, and its vowel is not pronounced clearly. Record. The verb record has stress on the second syllable. The first syllable is not stressed and its vowel is not pronounced clearly. Record. Now this time I'll say a word, and you say how many syllables it has and which syllable has the most stress. Business. Business. Two syllables, and the stress is on biz. Language. Language two syllables and the stress is on lang association association five syllables and the stress is on a department department three syllables and the stress is on part necessity necessity Four syllables, and the stress is on se. Ordinarily. 
ordinarily. Five syllables and the stress is on ne. Now I'll say some phrases. Again, say how many syllables the phrase has and which syllable has the most stress. Post office. Post office. Three syllables. The stress is on post. Take a break. Take a break. Three syllables. Stress on break. Open the window. Open the window. Five syllables. Stress on win. Under the table. Under the table. Five syllables. Stress on te. Every weekday. Every weekday. Four syllables. Stress on week. A happy fella. A happy fella. Five syllables. Stress on fell. Next, let's talk about stops and continuance. Listen to these two sounds. P. Mm. We make both of those sounds by pressing the lips together, but they're very different. When we make p, we press the lips together and we make the air stop for a moment. The air doesn't pass because the air is stopped by the lips. So the p sound is called a stop. B is also a stop. The lips stop the air for a moment. When we make the mmm sound, we press the lips together, but we permit the air to pass. It passes through the nose. The air continues to pass, so mmm is called a continuant. Now you try it. I'll say a sound, and you decide if the sound is a stop or a continuant. It's a continuant. S, a continuant. K, a stop. Sh, a continuant. G, a stop. V, a continuant, not a stop. B is a stop. U, a continuant. H, it's a continuant. Actually, there are only six stops and two combinations. The six stops are p, b, k, g, t, and d. Those are the six sounds that stop the air completely for a moment. Ch and j are combinations of a stop sound and a continuant sound. Why is that important? It's important because many languages don't have words that end with stops. Speakers of those languages sometimes don't hear the stops in English. And that's an easy mistake to make. North American English speakers often substitute another sound for t, d, k, g, p, and b. It's a sound we make down deep in the throat, in the place where we make the voice, down in the Adam's apple. It's the uh sound. It's the sound we make when we say, uh-oh. This sound is called a glottal stop. When a stop comes at the end of a word or syllable, we say the stop, but in a very different way. Instead of letting the air pass through the lips or teeth, we stop the air very quickly at the voice box, the Adam's apple, the glottis. You can find a drawing of the glottis in the illustration of points of articulation in your booklet. We make the air completely stop for a moment. Listen to these examples. All of them have this glottal stop at the end of the word. Light. Can you hear the throat close for a moment at the end? Light, flight, put, take, make, trip, 
Report. Now, listen to these compound words with more than one syllable. You can hear a stop in the middle of the word and again at the end. Stop light. Stop light. Apartment. Apartment. Back seat. Back seat. Assortment. Assortment. Work. Load, workload, a beat, a beat. Now you try it. Say these words after me, and be sure you make the air stop completely. Light, light, put, put, take. Make, make, trip, trip, report, report, stop light, stop light, apartment, apartment, back seat, back seat. Assortment. Assortment. Workload. Workload. A beat. A beat. Let's try some phrases. Say after me, please, and be careful to stop the air completely at the stops. Right now. Right now. Talk. Back. Talk back. Cook the books. Cook the books. Hate mail. Hate mail. Fax machine. Fax machine. Back breaking. Back breaking. You can also hear this sound when North American English speakers say, "button," "cotton." Can you hear it? When the word has a t, a t, and a vowel and an n n at the end, we make a glottal stop and we don't say the vowel at all. So then we say n immediately after the stop. Listen, kitten, kitten. Clinton. Clinton. Continent. Continent. Forgotten. Forgotten. Sentence. Sentence. Now you try it. Say after me, please, and be sure you make a complete stop of the air. Button. Button. Cotton. Cotton. Kitten. Kitten. Clinton. Clinton. Continent. Continent. Forgotten. Forgotten. Sentence. Sentence. This sound is called a glottal stop. Does it make your throat tired? It makes my tired too. This is not easy. Practice these words often and listen to native speakers. They use the sound all the time, and they probably don't even know it. Now let's talk about voicing. Now you know where the voice box, the glottis, is. So if you can at this moment, put your fingers lightly on the front of your throat on the glottis and say, s, m, l, r, k, sh, v, v, ch. 
some of these sounds make your throat vibrate, and you can feel the vibration with your fingers. Those are the voiced sounds. The sounds that don't make any vibration are called voiceless sounds. All vowels are voiced in English, and the other voiced sounds are b, d, g, j, l, m, n, n, r, v, u, i, z, v, and j. The voiceless sounds are There's one more voiceless sound, but we won't talk about it today. And why is voicing important? It's important because voicing or not voicing affects how long we say the vowel that comes before that sound. For example, listen to these pairs. He's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. You can hear that bad is said for a longer time than bat. D is a voiced sound, and we say the vowel before a voiced sound for a longer time. Listen again. He's a bad boy. He's a bad boy. Listen. She gets the ace. She gets the a's. Z is voiced, and s isn't. So we have to say a's for a longer time than we say ace. Listen. Tuck it in. Tug it in. We say tug longer because it ends with a voiced sound. Listen. Take the batch. Take the badge. Which vowel is said for a longer time? Now you try it. Say these sentences after me, please, and please be sure to make the vowel longer in the second sentence of each pair. He's a bat boy. He's a bad boy. She gets the ace. She gets the A's. Tuck it in. Tug it in. It was a flight. It was a fly. I want to write. I want to ride. We'll practice more like these in the later sessions. We have one more thing to cover in this session, but it's not very hard. Let's practice very briefly the stress in initials. In names and expressions that are made up of letters, we always put the most stress, the most force, on the last letter. Listen. OK. IRS, VIP, UN, PB&J, UK, UAE, USA. Do you hear that the most force is on the last letter? Now you try it. Repeat after me, please, and be sure you put the greatest force on the last letter. OK. IRS, VIP, UN, PB&J, UK, UAE, USA. Okay. Now, let's practice all this information together. Please say these sentences after me, and please be sure to be careful of vowels 1, E, 6, A, 10, U, and 11, U. Uh. Be sure your stops are really stops, and be sure to put the vowels before voiced sounds longer. Remember to put the most stress on the last in a series of letters. Ready? Please repeat. We've gone in, 
We've gone in the YMCA. We've gone in the YMCA. They're talking about. They're talking about the IPO. They're talking about the IPO. I don't like the place. I don't like the place. I don't like the plays. I don't like the plays. What can you? What can you tell our DA? What can you tell our DA? Take the report. Take the report to a VP. Take the report to a VP. We've covered a lot, and we have a lot more to cover in this course. Please listen to and practice tracks two through twelve at least five times before going on to the next lesson. Each lesson reviews and builds on the lessons which come before it, so review is very important. One last thing for this session: please look at the page of grammar terms in your accompanying booklet, and be sure you know all these terms in English. We're going to have to use some of these terms from time to time, and it's important that you know them when I use them. This is the end of session one. Till next time. Session two. In this second session, we're going to add three more North American English vowels, and we're going to contrast them against two vowels we've already learned. And we'll notice how consonant sounds are expressed differently, depending on what sounds come before and after them. And we'll start working on the tricky but important linking of words together. And then we're going to put a lot of this information together. Put together our information about voicing and non-voicing, and stops and continuance, and linking words together. And we'll examine how these factors affect our pronunciation of nouns and verbs. We're going to give some attention to how we stress phrases that have an adjective and a noun, and finally, we're going to see how a very common suffix changes the stress of many words. That's a lot of information, so let's get started. First, the vowels. Let's start with two vowels we worked on last session: a, six, and a, eleven. Remember, a、uh, six probably sounds like a vowel in your first language. A、uh, eleven may not sound so familiar, but it's a very, very important vowel in English, and you can't speak the language well if you don't have it. Listen to vowel six. Dod, shot, bob, mod, trot, pot. Listen to sound eleven. Dud, shut, bub, mud, truck, put. Listen to them side by side. Dod, dud. Shot, shut. Bob, bub. Mud, mud. Duck, duck. Pot, put. When you see these words spelled, you might be surprised. In syllables that end in an o and a consonant, or o and two consonants, the letter name is o, but the sound is usually a. Now let's add three more North American front vowels: three, a, four, e, and five, a. Number three, a, is usually not a big problem, 
because you can probably hear that A is really two sounds gliding together. Listen to vowel number three. A, made. A, pate. A, shake. Number four, E, is usually not a problem by itself. You probably have a sound like it in your first language. Listen to vowel number four. E, med. E, pet. E, shell. But number five, E, is sometimes a problem. First of all, it's probably not familiar to you. Many languages don't have this sound. And second of all, a lot of new speakers don't like to say this sounds. It sounds like an animal. Ah, ah. But you've got to have this sound in North American English. It's very important, and you must not confuse it with other sounds. Listen to vowel number five. Ah, mad. Ah, pat. Ah, shack. Now listen to these sounds one after the other. Vowel sound three. Dade, shape, made, trait. Vowel sound four. Dead, shep, med, tread. Vowel sound five. Dad, shad, mad, track. Vowel sound six, dod, shop, mod, trod. Vowel sound eleven, dud, shut, mud, trudge. Let's do some ear training. Please listen to these sounds and name them. Remember. A, three, a, four, a, five, a, six, a, eleven. Ready? What sound is a? It's five. A, five. A, three. Ah, six. Ah, uh, eleven. Ah, uh, eleven. Ah, uh, six. A, three. Ah, uh, six. A, three. A, five. A, four. A, eleven. A, six. A, eleven. A, five. A. Six. A. Three. A. Four. Now listen to the same five vowel sounds in short words and name them. Remember A. Three. A. Four. A. Five. A. Six. A uh, eleven. Taste. Taste. Three. Track. Track. Five. Nell. Nell. Four. Nod. Nod. Six. Sap, sap, five. Fan, fan, 
five. Fun. Fun. Eleven. Fast. Fast. Five. Job. Job. Six. Jug. Jug. Eleven. Mom. Mom. Six. Mum. Mum. Eleven. Ten. Ten. Four. Up. Up. Eleven. Block. Block. Six. One. One. Eleven. Puck. Puck. Eleven again. Pack. Pack. Five. Pit. Pit. Four. Ton, ton, eleven. This is hard work. Please play this lesson as many times as you need to to distinguish the differences. We're going to work now on the ways consonant stops differ depending on where they happen in the word. You remember stops from session one. There are six stops. Three are voiced and three are voiceless. The voiced stops are b, d, g. The voiceless stops are p, t, k. They make three pairs of sounds. Each pair is made in the same way, but one sound is voiced and the other one is voiceless. P and b. And d, k, and g. When these six sounds, especially the voiceless sounds, have a vowel after them, we say them with a lot of force, a lot of air. We make an explosion of them. Let me show you what I mean. Listen. To, till, talk, take, time, come, call, cook, kill. Kid, pass, pick, pocket, pour, peek. And you remember from session one, if these sounds come after a vowel and don't have a vowel following, we make a complete glottal stop and we don't let the air escape at all for a moment. Listen, out, put, get, meet, report. Remember, the air must stop completely for a moment. No air may pass for a moment. So don't say rapport and don't say report. To. All right, out, put, get, meet, report, make, truck, pick, quake, mistake, trip, up, cop, shrimp, sleep. Now you try it. Repeat them after me, please. Out. Out. Put. Put. Get. Get. Meet. Meet. Report. Report. Make. Make truck truck pick pick quake quake mistake mistake trip trip. Cop, 
cup. Shrimp. Shrimp. Sleep. Sleep. And that brings us to linking words together, as the native speakers do. Often, the final sound of a word is a consonant, but another word follows and it starts with a vowel. The easy thing for native speakers to do is to link the consonant to the vowel. Listen. Take off. Take off. Come over. Come over. Feel o, feel okay. Feel okay. Pull out, pull out. Have a, have another. Cold as ice, cold as ice. Kill an hour, kill an hour. Cream and cream and sugar. Cream and sugar. Take a take a vacation. Take a vacation. Have a have a wife. Have a wife. Has a has a husband. Has a husband. Walk in, walk in on, walk in on. Watch a, watch a movie, watch a movie. Now, you try it. Repeat after me, please. Take off, take off. Come over, come over. Feel o, feel okay, feel okay. Pull out, pull out. Have a, have another, have another. Cold as ice, cold as ice. Cold as ice. Kill an hour. Kill an hour. Cream and cream and sugar. Cream and sugar. Take a take a vacation. Take a vacation. Have a, have a wife. Have a wife. Has a, has a husband. Has a husband. Walk in, walk in on. Walk in on. Watch a, watch a movie. Watch a movie. Good. Those are phrases. Now let's practice some useful sentences. Be sure you listen carefully and link your sounds as I do. He always comes in on time. He always comes in on time. He always comes in on time. My watch says seven o two. My watch says seven o two. My watch says seven o two. She works at. She works at one fifty seven Post Oak. She works at one fifty seven Post Oak. Call two eight one five 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 six seven eight nine. Call two eight one 
555-6789. Send it. Send it to the post office. Send it to the post office. They're working on a... They're working on a project. They're working on a project. Take a minute. Take a minute to look over the report. Take a minute to look over the report. If you have a very good ear, you might have noticed the difference in the final S of comes in and the final S of works up. The final S of comes in has voice. It sounds like z with voice. The final S of works up doesn't have voice. It's just s. The difference is because of the sounds around them. You remember that some sounds in English are voiceless. And, ch, and there's also and and one more, but they don't happen at the end of words, so they don't apply here. If a word ends with p or k or t or f or th, one of those voiceless sounds, the plural ending or the possessive ending or the present tense verb ending will also be voiceless. Listen. Pets. Cats. Hates, pops, caps, flips, mix, cakes, makes, Ralphs, cliffs, coughs, Ruths, myths. Now repeat them after me. Pets, cats. Hates, pops, caps, flips, mix, cakes, makes, Ralphs, cliffs, coughs, Ruths, myths. Now, here are some words that end with a voiced sound. When we add the S ending, we'll say the ending with a voice also. We'll say Z. Listen. Ruds. Foods. Fades. Notice the vowel before the voiced consonant is longer. Listen again. Ruds. Foods. Fades. Bobs, cabs, rubs, megs, dogs, digs, fills, dolls, fields, toms, bombs, comes. And repeat them, please. Ruds, foods, fades, bobs, cabs, rubs, megs, dogs, digs, fills, Dolls, fields, toms, bombs, comes. And then there is a third category for final S sounds. We call these sounds, the whistling sounds, sibilants. And these are the sounds that hiss in your ear. They are s. Z, sh, z, ch, j, and x. Can you hear the hiss? When a word finishes with a sibilant 
and we need to add an S ending, we make it a little easier for ourselves. We add an extra syllable for the S. Listen, please. Rosses. Sentences. Misses. Do you hear the extra syllable? Rosses. Sentences. Misses. Roses. Noses. Muses. Trishes. Brushes. Brushes. Mitches. Watches. Catches. Hodges. Pages. Rages. Foxes. Boxes. Fixes. Now, you repeat them after me, please. Rosses. Sentences. Misses. Be sure you're making the extra syllable. Rosses. Sentences. Misses. Roses. Noses. Muses. Trishes. Brushes. Rushes. Mitches. Watches. Catches. Hodges. Pages. Rages. Foxes. Boxes. Fixes. Let's do some sentences with the voiceless, the voiced, and sibilant endings. First, listen and see if you can hear the differences. Pat's son hates cats. Sam's mom rides trains. Ross's dresses have prices. Sid's spuds made suds. Saul's dolls tell tales. Rick's ducks take walks. Rose's kid chooses her noses. Now, repeat them after me, please. Pat's son hates cats. Pat's son hates cats. Sam's mom rides trains. Sam's mom rides trains. Ross's dresses have prices. Ross's dresses have prices. Sid's spuds made suds. Sid's spuds made suds. Saul's dolls tell tales. Saul's dolls tell tales. Rick's ducks take walks. Rick's ducks take walks. Rose's kid chooses her noses. Rose's kid chooses her noses. Practice these often. We have two more things to cover this session, but they're easier things. First, stress in individual words. Here's a very important word ending, a suffix. When you use it, you can change a verb into a noun. It's the ending 
T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N or T-I-O-N. In English, the word stress is often predictable. Listen. Fusion. Faction. Fiction. Nation. Addition. Addition. Invasion. Satisfaction. Distribution. Elimination. Privatization. Where does the stress fall? It falls on the syllable just before the ION suffix. Please repeat and be sure you stress the syllable just before the ION ending. Fusion. Faction. Fiction. Nation. Addition. Addition. Invasion. Satisfaction. Distribution. Elimination. Privatization. Finally, let's talk about phrase or sentence stress, the words that get the most stress in a group of words. Each of the following phrases is made of an adjective and a noun. Listen. Which word gets more stress, the adjective or the noun? The old man. A happy day. Three blind mice. A nine-man team. A two-car garage. Pretty little children. A ferocious dog. Yes, usually in a phrase of an adjective and a noun, the noun has the more stress, the more force. Please listen, repeat these phrases, and be sure to stress the noun in each. The old man. The old man. A happy day. A happy day. Three blind mice. Three blind mice. A nine man team. A nine man team. A two car garage. A two car garage. Pretty little children. Pretty little children. A ferocious dog. A ferocious dog. Now, repeat these sentences after me. Remember to be careful of the vowel sounds. Be careful of the stops. Be sure you really stop the air completely. Be careful of the vowels before voiceless stops, that they're short, and the vowels before voiced consonants, that they're longer, and watch your stress. Repeat, please. Keep it. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Put that. Put that on the grass. Put that on the grass. This is a... This is a nice place. This is a nice place. Tell him... Tell him what you want. Tell him what you want. Give him... Give him three gold coins. Give him three gold coins. I've got... I've got four big bags. I've got four big bags. She walks on... She walks on the beach every... She walks on the beach every morning. She walks on the beach every morning. Take it. 
Take it to the post office. To the post office. Take it to the post office. So far in this course, we've worked on vowel sounds 1, E, 3, A, 4, E, 5, A, 6, A, 10, U, and 11, A. Uh. And we've noticed how consonant sounds are expressed differently depending on where they occur in a word. We've put a lot of our information together put together information about voicing and non-voicing and stops and continuance and linking words together. And we've examined how these factors affect our pronunciation of nouns and verbs. We've examined how we stress phrases that have an adjective and a noun, and we've seen how this very common suffix ion changes the stress of many words. In our next session, we'll add a couple more vowels and we'll work on the regular past and past participle verb forms. And we'll add two more indispensable North American English speech sounds. We'll work on stress in another common suffix, and we'll focus on where to put the stress in noun plus noun words and phrases. Please listen to and practice tracks 13 through 22 at least five times before going on to the next CD. Review the whole CD from time to time, and if you can, ask a native speaker to read some of these phrases and sentences to you. This is the end of CD1 and Session 2. Till next time.